Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. The 5700 XT has been out for a little while now, so Gigabyte sent over their brand new Aorus 5700 XT for us to check out and to see how it performed in our regular suite of benchmarks. Now this video is a little different to the other GPU videos we've done, again, with another slight twist, and this one's by request, we're gonna show some Windows and Linux direct comparisons. So, let's get into it. Let's quickly talk about how we're testing this. We're using our brand new GPU test system, which is running the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Ultra with the i7-8700K at five gigahertz with 16 gigs of Team Group Dark Z at 3600 megahertz. Now we did a full build of this system and it runs both Windows and Linux. And you can check that out in the top right hand corner right about now. We also included some other cards that I've tested recently to give this Aorus 5700 just a little bit of context. I meant to say 5700XC. Anyway, uh, we don't include 1% highs or lows with these tests because it would just introduce heaps of extra testing. And once again, as usual, I feel like the average frame rate gives us a great indication of the expected performance. Anyways, now we use these benchmarks for every single GPU benchmarking video. So you can go to any of the videos and compare this GPU to any of the other GPUs that we previously tested. Now we are slightly changing up the Windows benchmark Benchmarking. We're going to be introducing Basemark as a new benchmark for Windows as well. But yeah, I'll talk about that a little bit later. We also like to use testing that's repeatable and we like to use standardized testing, not gameplay testing because gameplay stuff just can't be repeated and it's just way too inaccurate and it's pretty unreliable. We want the only variable in our, all of our tests basically just to be the GPU, not a section of gameplay. And yeah, I know people don't like it, but I don't care. It's the correct way to do it. Let's give people repeatable results every single time. With all that said, let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, like I mentioned, we're changing this up a bit because we're gonna show Windows and Linux benchmarks at the same time. So let's see what happened. For the 1080p test in Windows, we saw the Aorus card get an average score of 133 frames per second. For the 1080p test in Linux, we saw the Aorus card get an average score of 118 frames per second. For the 1440p test in Windows, we saw the Aorus card get an average score of 94 frames per second. For the 1440p test in Linux, we saw the Aorus card get an average score of 93 frames per second. For the 4K test in Windows, we saw the Aorus card get an average score of 52 frames per second. And for the 4K test in Linux, we saw the Aorus card get an average score of also 52 frames per second. Okay, let's see how they stack up side by side between Windows and Linux for a little bit of context. Let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed three tests in total. We used the 4K optimized preset, the 1080p extreme preset, and the custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur disabled. Now, the Linux OpenGL version does not perform anywhere near the Windows version. So yeah, that's, that's why, but we'll show those comparisons anyway. For the 1440p custom test in Windows, we saw the Aorus card get an average score of 120 frames per second. For the 1440p custom test in Linux, we saw the Aorus card get an average score of 83 frames per second. For the 4K optimized test in Windows, we saw the Aorus card get an average score of 56 frames per second. For the 4K optimized test in Linux, we saw the Aorus card get an average score of 41 frames per second. For the 1080p extreme test in Windows, we saw the Aorus card get an average score of 40 frames per second. 
And for the 1080p extreme test in Linux, we saw the Aorus card get an average score of 31 frames per second. Let's uh, stack them up side by side and see how they compare between Windows and Linux for a little bit of context. But as I mentioned already, the results are skewed basically because the difference between DirectX 11 and OpenGL. Next up is Basemark GPU. Now Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance since the 3D engine it uses has been designed from the ground up to use low level Vulkan API calls. And yeah, it really does take advantage of your 3D hardware. We're also slowly building up our Windows Basemark database at the moment. So from now on, we're gonna have Windows results too. And yeah, we did all of these tests with the high preset. For the 1080p test in Linux, we saw the Aorus card get an average score of 160 frames per second. For the 1440p test in Linux, we saw the Aorus card get an average score of 123 frames per second. For the 4K test in Linux, we saw the Aorus card get an average score of 74 frames per second. Alright, let's uh, see how they stack up again side by side with Windows and Linux to give the cards a little bit of context. Now these results are quite close and yeah, uh, I wasn't surprised because yeah, Vulcan. <laughs> Okay, the last batch of Windows tests is with the Final Fantasy 15 benchmarking tool. Now we're slowly going to be phasing out this benchmark because we want to have parity with the benchmarking software we use between Windows and Linux. For the 1080p test, we saw the Aorus card render a total amount of 10,472 frames. For the 1440p test, we saw the Aorus card render a total amount of 7,405 frames. For the 4K test, we saw the Aorus card render a total amount of 4,190 frames. I didn't do extensive thermal testing because it just would have taken too long based on the fact, and this is the only fact, that we're actually expanding our like our benchmarking database and we're using Basemark. So I did start testing a lot of the other cards in Windows and Linux as well. And yeah, but I did make a few observations while I was running the testing in Windows. We saw the card hit a, a maximum of around 67 degrees and I think that's pretty acceptable for a 5700 XT. Performance wise, it performs about as well as the other higher end 5700 XTs we've looked at. And much like the ASRock Tai Chi card as well, the Aorus card also has a physical BIOS switch so you can switch between the OC mode and the silent mode. And yeah, all of our testing that we did for this video was done in the OC mode. The Aorus 5700 XT is going for around 759 Aussie dollars, around, I'm, I'm gonna say 500 US dollars because we don't have pricing yet because this card only goes on sale in January. And I'll put links in the description when it becomes available, but for now, that's all the info I've got. Also, before I wrap this video up, I, I decided to include all of that Linux testing because I figured that doing two videos like we did for the last GPU video for the 1650 Super, uh, it was probably too hard to do comparisons between the two, between Windows and Linux, because yeah, I, I basically forced you to watch two videos and I won't do that again. I, I figured out the format for these Windows and Linux type of videos now. All right, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek. And I told you Linux peeps, I'm looking after you. Thanks for watching.